I'm daydreaming about dragons again. It's Judd. Thanks for listening. Here we go. I'm thinking about ending games. Uh, I've been playing Burning Wheel with my buddy Aaron uh, for a little over a month, and we've been gaming about twice a week. And, and because it's a single GM, single player game, uh, you know, if we game for two to four hours, it's a lot. It's a lot of content. It's a lot of movement. It's a lot of roles. It's a lot of character development. It's just a whole lot, uh, which is great. It's been a lot of fun. And I, it's the game I've been writing about. So I've got over 25,000 words written. And I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with that. It's all kind of Forgotten Realms fanfic. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe putting it up on a forum. We'll see. We'll see what, 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 it, what ends up happening with it. But for now, what, what I'm thinking about, my buddy Aaron is moving to New Hampshire uh, next week. So by the time this gets out, he'll be two weeks, two weeks in the land of live free or die. So the game is, it's ending, but we could, we could meet online or we could, we, when he visits town or when I visit, New, if when I visit him in New Hampshire, we could find time to game again, maybe, or we could do it online, which would be cool. But we still wanted to find, I felt it was important to get to that spot. And, and we did really, really thanks to Aaron. Um, making interesting choices. And I want to talk about what those choices were and, and the way we usually think about endings. Because I feel like the way we generally think about endings is, and I can't help but think that this is a result of, of fantasy epic novel series, right? Uh, where when it's done, you have this sense of overall completion. Um, all the little boxes have been checked. And, and things are resolved. But life never resolves. I'm not sure why games should resolve. And I've had a couple of different games end in this particular way where it's not necessarily the end. Not, everything's not perfect. All the villains haven't been brought to justice. But the protagonist has started, the character has started a new chapter. And that's what ended up happening with our game. Aaron made some really... I, I gave his character an offer uh, thinking that he probably wouldn't take it. And he did. He, he took it. And he, it put him in this dangerous new position uh, with, in, a, in a situation that he might not even have the skills to really live up to it, which is ver a very difficult place to be in Burning Wheel. And he knows that. He's a, a BW vet. And it was cool. It was a very brave choice of his and I like ending the game there because he's at the cusp of this new thing right so not only does the game the game ends with the character moving in this new direction and we, we played a little we played a session or a half you know session and a half in that new direction just to kind of get a feeling for what it's like and then we leave it there and if we come back to it great I'd love to see how, how he deals with, with this new this new endeavor and if we don't that's okay, too. I'm okay with, with him being off in that new place. I think that's all right. As a matter of fact, it's, it's kind of exciting. And something similar happened in another Forgotten Realms BW game. This one was a play-by-post that I ran with my buddy Daniel. And his character made his way to Waterdeep, and it really ended with him starting a new endeavor in Waterdeep. And I, I, we, we stopped playing, and in both cases, the new endeavor very much reflected things that were going on in that person's life, which is interesting, because I had no plan for that. That was not in the cards. And in both cases, we just said, okay, I'm kind of happy with that. That's all right. We can, we can come back to it or not. And I like that. I like ending in a situation where... The pressure's off. Everything's not perfect. The world hasn't been entirely saved. But the character's in a new place. You know, there's been a, a full revolution of the wheel, to use burning wheel terms. Not that the wheel, burning wheel ever spins, it just burns. But you get the idea. Uh, even if the metaphor doesn't work in the slightest in any way, uh, there, there's been a, a, a revolution. There's something has changed. And that's exciting. And, and the player isn't, the character isn't 
dealing with the same conflicts. They're dealing with all new conflicts. And it's okay to walk away at that point. It doesn't need to all be tidied up with a bow. And I, I like that. I like that ending point. I find that much more satisfying than, than a lot of alternatives where, where you're trying to just get everything done, every little NPC, finish it all up. I've very seldom ever seen that happen. Maybe once. The old 7th C game I, I played when I, you know, back in, in college. Uh, that one had a good ending. But not often. I mean, I, I can think of really one time. And, you know, with, if it's a game that doesn't already have an ending kind of baked into it. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about ending, ending games and, and ending them at the beginning of book one of the next book instead of a nice tidy chapter of the, of the last book, you know? Not necessarily doing the big epilogue, but doing the, hey, this is where they're going. Cool. Wave to them as they go off into the sunset. It's nice. It's really nice. And, and it worked. It worked out. It was pleasant. Uh, I really, really liked it. And, and I'm just putting that out there for you all. That it's another way to think about endings is uh, a new beginning. And it feels more like life. Life doesn't, you know, you don't just get to this point where you're like, okay, I'm done. Fantastic. Or at least not yet. I hope. So, endings. How have your endings been? You have a lot of games that have ended in satisfying ways. Best case scenario, worst case scenario. I'd love to hear about them. Uh, drop me a line. And let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how your games have ended. Which, you know, go in the Hall of Fame as, wow, that was amazing. That was the best. And which, uh, which don't. Which, which are, are still, still burrs in your coat. You got any of those? Any burrs in your coat? I'd love to hear about them. Uh, my Twitter is the, the last thing on the show notes. Drop me a line. Drop me a line there. You can do it in the, through the Anchor app. Send me an email. We'll talk about it more at the end of the show. Let's get to the inspiration goat. Nice one, inspiration goat. Nice one. So this is a YouTube video. It's about 20 minutes long. And it is by Lisa Hanawalt, who is one of the main creators on BoJack Horseman. And she also does another amazing show that's animated called uh, Luca and Birdie, which is also incredible. And I've never watched BoJack Horseman, so I have no idea what, what that... I've heard, the, I've heard good things about it. But it's not so much about the show. It's about the creative process and anxiety and feeling imposter syndrome and a lot of things that I've heard all of my creative friends and many anchorites and everyone I've never known who's made art and has just had to share something in public creatively say... And I think that really, you know, I'm always trying to link Inspiration Goat's material back to, uh, back to gaming. And, and what we do, whether or not you think it's art, I don't really care. Uh, I don't want to have that argument. But I, what I will what I'd like to argue is that it is sharing creativity. And that can be very daunting for some folks. And there is a technique to it. And there is, there's good stuff and bad stuff. And, and that's okay. And what's good for one table is not so good for another. And what's bad at one table is good at another. And we have to learn to process those feelings and help our friends as they go through them and support one another. And we are. We're doing okay. Some days are better than others. But I, I just thought this video was a really cool... I haven't heard it communicated quite this way with such humor and honesty, and I just thought it was beautiful. And uh, my wife sent me the, the video, um, and she also is the voice behind Inspiration Goat, and she sent me it today, and I really was blown away by it. And I think the reason why she's sending it to me is because I'm writing a lot lately, and I wrote 26,000 words that's basically Forgotten Realms fan fiction based on a Burning Wheel game set in the Forgotten Realms that me and my buddy Aaron played. 
And now I'm writing something else. I'm 8,000 words into something else. And when she comes home from work, she'll, she'll say, you know, how did it, how's the writing going? And I'll, you know, I, I always get my seven, I'm, you know, I'm eight days in a row of getting my, my, you know, 750 to a thousand words in a day, but it's still, the, the work kind of feels terrible. It still feels like it's bad. And I'm just putting my head down and working through the bad and, and knowing it's going to be bad and that's okay. And I'm trying to deal with that. And, and she's watching me deal with it. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I, you know, I got my words in. You know, there were a couple of good moments, but it's still bad. And I don't know. I wanted to share that. I, I feel like folks don't talk about that a lot. And whether it's prepping for your game or sharing something and feeling like it went a little flat or coming up with a character idea, or publishing a module on the DMs Guild, or whatever it is, whatever, you know, publishing your, your LARP on itch, whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, I hope you keep at it. I hope you know that if it is bad, and you published it, and it's a finished work, and you look at it and really don't like it, you'll do better next time. And if it is a draft, and it's bad, then you have time to make it better. And just, you know, keep working. Don't let it stop you. Please don't let it stop you. Uh, we need more voices out here. We need more diverse voices in this hobby. And if, if I, I'm sure that for folks for whom they're walking into this hobby and not seeing a lot of representations of themselves in the various creatives and in the various fictions, and when... That's got to be even harder. And I hope whoever you are listening to this, that you, you get some words down today or get some art down today or whatever it is that you were, you were thinking about doing, you get it done. And I'll be out there doing it too somewhere. And this ain't easy, but keep at it. And I hope this video inspires you the way it inspired me because I just finished watching it uh, while eating my lunch and I, I grabbed my grabbed my phone out and said, I got a, I got an inspiration goat this sucker because what we do is share creative stuff together. Uh, and I don't, not even, pub, not even if you're publishing, but just gaming, you know, just saying, well, I'm going to, you know, put my, stick my torch in the gargoyle's mouth. And then, you know, now that my hands are free, I can use that to climb up the rope faster. That's creativity, you know? And, and for, some, for some tables, that's an awesome veteran move. And, and for others, I don't know, it's not enough character development or something. So just, it's okay. Just, uh, you know, keep getting it out there and, and we'll do this together. All right? If you want to drop me a line, let me know how things are going for you. Uh, let, me, let me know how your creative process is going. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, what's going on at your gaming table, whatever it is. Whatever it is that, that this, listening to this has stirred up in you, I would love to hear about it. And I am going to close out with an outro, just talking about how you can support the show. And I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening. All right, so you'd like to support the show. There is a support this show button. It's on the Anchor app. If you look on the Anchor site where this, you know, not necessarily your podcatcher, but if you go to this site where this, where this show is based, uh, you should, you'll, there, there's a support the show button. You're welcome to do it through that. You can buy my book, Dictionary of Moo, if it's your thing. If a demon-haunted setting that is somewhere between the triangle points of the Bible, uh, Robert E. Howard's Cull books, Call the Conqueror, and uh, what else? Edgar Barsoom's Mars, maybe? Maybe real Mars? Somewhere in that triangle or quadrangle or whatever it ends up, angle it ends up being? If that sounds interesting to you, drop by and pick up Dictionary of Moo. And if none of that is possible or feasible for you, uh, feel free to drop me an email, drop me a Twitter, drop me a Mastodon, whatever it is that, that is, works easiest for you. Uh, my email is judd.karlman at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. 
Uh, I, I, do a, I do a Wednesday – I try to put out a Wednesday show with either links or uh, replies and sometimes maybe a little bit of both. Uh, it's usually a pretty fast show, probably in and around 10 minutes. So if you want to be in on that, drop me a line. Let me know what's going on at your gaming table. Ask me a follow-up question, and we'll get to it. All right. I hope your spring is going into well. It's going well, and we're getting into summer. And I hope you're feeling good. All right. Get some sun. Process some vitamin D. I'll see you on the other side.